Fellas, I did it. This is a real photo. I love what I'm seeing. I love what's going on right now. Now all we need is just for her to subscribe to the channel and I'll just ascend to another plane of existence. Speaking of real though, remember when 17 year old Pele scored this goal in the World Cup? I sure do remember that day distinctly as a successful actor in a past life. But what if I told you that goal never actually happened? In fact, the entire World Cup that that goal was scored in was a hoax. Ad time. Today's sponsor is OneFootball. OneFootball allows you to follow your favorite teams, leagues, and even players. You can get live match scores, alerts, player ratings, and know exactly what's going on with instant up-to-date news. In addition to all these great new features, OneFootball has given us something even better. The app is now offering Indian Super League fans everywhere, except in the Indian subcontinent, the opportunity to stream all live matches and highlights. But it's not just the Indian Super League, it's also other great major leagues, and it's also for free. To any new fans, the Indian Super League is just about to start, so here's the chance to watch legends like Sunil Khetri. And remember, this is all free, so go down in the description, click that link, download one football for either Apple or Android, because I promise, you won't want to miss out. Conspiration 58, or Conspiracy 58 in English, was a Swedish documentary made in 2002 claiming that the FIFA World Cup in 1958 did not take place in Sweden. Meet Bror Jax de Verne, author, historian, professor, and more importantly, the chairman of the KSB 58 movement. The KSB 58 is basically an organization revolving around the idea that the World Cup in 1958 never actually happened. After the Brazilians won their first ever World Cup title, De Verne, who was part of Sweden's national agency, started to collect thousands of documents, photos, and texts. And this is where he started to have some doubts about whether or not the World Cup actually happened or not. To him, this wasn't just a problem for Sweden, it was also a problem for the entire world. For the hand letter, om inte bara idrottsvärldens förljugenhet utan hela världsdelars förljugenhet, mänsklighetens förljugenhet. The Verne's first big piece of evidence is a clip from Sweden's 3-1 victory against West Germany in the semifinals. In the 88th minute, Kura Hamren scored a brilliant solo goal. Everything's pretty normal until the camera pans. These buildings in the background do not exist in Sweden, let alone Gothenburg. De Verne quickly found out those buildings were actually found in Los Angeles, California, in the US. He also mentions how he was once at the stadium and in that area was just forest. To add on top of that clip, he shows us the German keeper seemingly laughing after conceding the third goal. He infers that there would be no laughter had the game actually been serious. Another piece of evidence, are the shadows. De Verne says the matches couldn't possibly be played in Sweden due to how the shadows fall. He claims the shadows in the World Cup, the so-called World Cup, can only fall like they did in Western North America. There's also other smaller pieces of evidence, like how the Brazilian shoes couldn't exist back then. Do they ever elaborate on this? No. In the end, De Verne concludes that the World Cup was faked and exists only as forged television and radio coverage in a conspiracy between American and Swedish television, FIFA, and the CIA. I'm telling you now. I have plans that I cannot share with you right now. And as this was during the Cold War, the US actually used this World Cup to see how TV could influence people. Rohr calls this the media race, kind of like the space race. Which sure, but why wasn't it broadcasted in the US? You know, like the the target demographic. However, it's not just Deverne's views that get the limelight. The documentary also features interviews from actual sports journalists from World Cup 1958, former Swedish internationals who played in that World Cup, and even former UEFA president Niels Lennart Johansson. However, pretty much the only counterclaim we hear is the weak-minded, I was there. Yeah, it was a willkor when I was going to be in this debate, that this question of VM 58 would not come up. What do you think about the football VM 58? Fotbolls-VM 58. Det är typiskt bror Jack att han drar upp den då och får det här till en lekstuga. Jag menar, VM 58 är något av det största som vi har upplevt i Sverige. Anyways, as we go further into this documentary, we start learning about the conspiracy organization's militant past. Yes. I said that right. For example, former Swedish international Sigge Parling, who played in that World Cup, had one of his horses spray painted. Other players were also sent threatening letters, and there were even attacks on stadiums. Rådspark exploderade rökbomben på idrottsparken i Norrköping. Resterna har nu skickats. What is going on? KSB also had a couple sister organizations across the globe, and at the time they were working on expanding into Brazil, which. Uh, I don't know exactly if that would have gone down well with the Brazilians. Another segment that I loved was when De Verne was interpreting a statue, because this is quite literally every single English class I've ever taken in high school. Detta är, ville han säga, den, den sanna sidan av VM 58. 
Och här där det kommer ut efter massmedias behandling så är det den fördjugna sidan av VM58, nämligen den non-existenta. As the battle between the believers and non-believers continues to unfold, we get introduced to a few new people and learn that the KSB is also working underground with former members who are secretly funding the organization. Hej, hey, det var ju så ringde angående intervju. Mm. The last part of this documentary, though, gives us mostly a perspective through the eyes of the people who believe the World Cup actually happened. These are who we call sheep. Their mission is to make sure to carry their knowledge to the next generation, that way Deverne and his organization cannot win. It's kind of grim, because it's portrayed as if, like, a, an ideology was just dying. The ideology of... World Cup 1958. Speaking of our boy Broer though, he and a publisher are out selling his book on how the 1958 World Cup was fake. This documentary was kind of all over the place. It gives you most of the evidence at the very beginning, and then just turns into like a culture war. But later into the book selling fiasco, the Defend 58 movement clashes with Defend. Dog, I... I don't know what the f*** is happening anymore. Finally, this documentary comes to a close, and it turns out... It's a complete hoax. The Conspiration 58 organization and the Verne's views were basically invented for the sake of fantasy. Honestly, 10 out of 10, much better than pretty much every single DCEU movie I've ever seen. But the whole purpose of director Johann Lofstedt's mockumentary was to show how historical revisionism works and to highlight the importance of verifying sources when getting information. Historical revisionism is basically falsification of the past. Examples include the lost cause of the Confederacy, Japanese textbooks blatantly hiding war crimes, and of course, genocide denial. Denialism, as it can also go by, uses tactics of manipulation of information statistics skewing, and presenting forged documents as if they were genuine. Most of the people understood the documentary was a hoax, but there are a decent amount of people who completely missed the point. That was in 2002, but considering there's a growing anti-vax community, and also somehow this theory is being thrown around in politics, yeah, I feel like there might be a little bit of work that needs to be done in uh, source criticism. Just, just a little bit. But the question remains though, did World Cup 1958 actually happen? The answer? No. Why? It was revealed to me in a dream. This was uh, a little fun video, something a little bit different. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna be doing a lot of these kind of World Cup history type things, so hope you guys are ready. But of course, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Janos Bala, Sentley Hank Dennis, El Favi, Milioy 9 Alex Rod, Ulta, Amin Suamez, Arai San, Arnofo Martinez Jr., Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Juan Leras, Kev FM, Wendy Mintang, Parafocus, Rory Burns, Subscribe to Tenditem, The Motor Drive, Tomicus, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Carlos G, Chris Damaseno, David Dunn, Declan Malloy, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Jordan Clavitt, Mohamed Obok Hale, Emmett Sweep, Patrick Barley, President Pulisic, and Unbroken Persona. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you'd like, follow my Instagram if you want, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 15,000 there, and of course, you can follow my semi-active Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.